welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. The Arkansas Razorbacks come in at number 16 in our way too early top 25, fresh off an unbelievable year two under Sam Pittman. The Razorbacks went 9-4 in 2021, and just again, year two under Sam Pittman, the Razorbacks winning eight regular season games and capping it off with a dominant victory over Penn State in the Outback Bowl. And guys, despite maybe having one of the most difficult schedules in the entire country, we are here today to show you that the Razorbacks can not only weather this storm and weather this schedule, but that it might be a little bit more favorable than you think. So guys, again, before we jump into this, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Uh, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and again, become a part of our Gridiron Expert team. Become a part of the GE Nation. You can do that by just hitting that like button, by leaving a comment, by subscribing to us so you don't miss out on any of the college football content we have going for you for the rest of the year. We are here talking football every day, 24-7, 365. And if that sounds good to you, then subscribe to us and again, become a part of our nation because I promise you, you're not going to regret it. So we take a look at the Razorbacks, guys. Before we even dump, jump into the schedule, I want to kind of look at the outlook a little bit. Uh, again, this team is loaded with talent. They lose plenty from last year, but they're loaded with talent. K.J. Jefferson returns at quarterback, a guy who's got a cannon for an arm, but also has unbelievable dual threat ability, the perfect quarterback for offensive coordinator Kendall Bryle's system. They're loaded at the running back position. Arkansas was dominant on the ground last year, averaging well over 200 rushing yards per game. The majority of the offensive line is back. Yes, they lose their star wide receiver in Traylon Burks, but Jaden Hazelwood comes in from Oklahoma, the five-star wide receiver transfer. The defense, yes, loses a handful of key pieces. Jalen Catalan, though, returns from an injury. Bumper Poole is back at linebacker as one of the best linebackers, not just in the SEC, but in the entire country. They also added Drew Sanders, the five-star linebacking transfer from Alabama. And Sam Pittman went out and dominated the transfer portal as well, adding a handful of key uh, starters coming in for the secondary. Arkansas has the talent and the pieces in place to be a contender in the SEC West. They are a dark horse contender for us to win the SEC West. That might be a stretch. It's Alabama's division until proven otherwise. But the Razorbacks are on the rise. They have the talent to do it. They have the coaches to do it. And they have the schedule to make some noise too. Look at the schedule, guys. It's tough. But so is life in the SEC. If you're in the SEC, especially in the SEC West, arguably the best conference and the best division in all of college football, your schedule is going to be difficult. But the one thing I want to point out before we really start breaking it down is look at the home games. Look at the home games. Arkansas only has four true road games. Twelve games. Four true road games. The game against Texas A&M, of course, will be at Cowboy Stadium in Arlington. Four true road games. At Missouri, at Auburn, at BYU, at Mississippi State. So, relatively favorable there. The Razorbacks get all of the big games at home. They get Alabama at home. They get LSU at home. They get Ole Miss at home. A&M on a neutral site. Razorback fans typically travel well. You can even factor in the Cincinnati and South Carolina games. Both of those games going to be in Fayetteville. So the Razorbacks have an opportunity to defend their home turf. And if they do that, they can be in store for a very special year. Way better and way more special than what they just experienced in 2021. And for a team that was the dumpster fire and at the seller of the SEC, all some saw it, the seller of the nation, that's something that you couldn't be happier about couldn't be more happy about. We take a look at their schedule in deeper detail, guys. What's the key stretch for them? We've, done, we've given a key stretch for every team. What is the key stretch for the Razorbacks going into 2022? Well, it's right there at the beginning. It is right there at the beginning. Those first five games will dictate the success of Arkansas in 2022. And there's no doubt about that. I mean, you look at the schedule, guys. There's an opportunity or a chance that four of the five teams they play could be ranked in the top 25 uh, come 2022. Cincinnati will certainly be ranked in the top 25. South Carolina might not be at first, but could be by week two. A&M certainly will be. Alabama certainly will be. The only team, of course, tonight will be Missouri State. Why is that game kind of interesting? Arkansas should win that game. Missouri State is led by Bobby Petrino. That's their head coach. Petrino used to be the Razorbacks head coach from 2008 to 2011. He was the last guy prior to Sam Pittman that led Arkansas to at least a nine-win season. He went 11-2 and two in 
20, or 2011. So kind of an interesting homecoming for Petrino after getting fired uh, in 2012. Those first five games, guys, are going to be huge. Cincinnati, a team that made the college football playoff last year, yes, loses tons of talent from that team last year, including Desmond Ritter and their top two quarterbacks. Not going to be an easy task for Arkansas. South Carolina in week two, a team that just added Spencer Rattler as their brand new quarterback. Shane Beamer did a phenomenal job in the transfer portal and did a phenomenal job last year in 2021. Exceeded all expectations in Columbia, getting South Carolina to a bowl game and winning that bowl game in dominant fashion over North Carolina. You get the Missouri State game. Then you get Texas A&M and Arlington. The Razorbacks snapped, what was it, a 10-game losing streak to the Aggies? They had not defeated Texas A&M since they joined the SEC, since A&M had joined the SEC. Arkansas snapped that streak last year, defeating Texas A&M 20-10. Great, great moment for the Razorbacks. And really, I think for many show that Arkansas had finally turned a corner, had finally gotten over that hump after so many close losses to the Aggies in recent years. Then they get Alabama. Many are quick to chalk that up as a loss. Let's keep in mind that last year in Tuscaloosa, Arkansas only fell to Alabama 42 to 35. If they had known how to play a lick of defense, the Razorbacks very well could have won that game over the Crimson Tide and ruined Alabama's playoff hopes. So Alabama now comes to Fayetteville, and I'm here to tell you right now, guys, it's not out of the realm of possibility to see Arkansas at 4-0 going into the Alabama game. Which means that if that's the case, Arkansas and Alabama on October 1st will be a top 10 matchup in Fayetteville, maybe even the site of college game day, which for you Razorback fans out there we know would be a huge deal. They have not come to Fayetteville since 2006, the old Darren McFadden days. There's a chance you could see a top 10 matchup there and that this Alabama-Arkansas game could determine who wins the SEC West, even though it is already back in October. Arkansas might possibly own a tiebreaker over a and If they somehow get a win over Alabama, you're talking about Arkansas not just as the SEC West favorite, but a college football playoff contender. And that might be a stretch for some. We're not saying that's going to happen. We're not predicting any games here. But those first five games, again, will dictate the success of Arkansas' season. You know, do they emerge out of there at 4-1? and 5-0 and or 4-1? and one? If that's the case, it's remarkable. But I think anything less than 4-1 and one might be viewed as a disappointment for the Razorbacks, for Razorback faithful. You know, I think most people are expecting Arkansas to win their first three games uh, and maybe split the games against Texas A&M and Alabama. I think many are expecting that. Uh, but those first five games, again, if they come out of there at 4-1 and one or better, they're looking really good. 3-2, and two, not horrible. You know, no, no one's really expecting Arkansas to win a natty this year. Uh, but anything less than 3-2, and two, if they were to lose to Cincinnati or South Carolina, then A&M and Alabama, a bad start to the year, uh, would not bode well for Sam Pittman and the Hawks. So again, the first five games going to be key. After that, they get three straight road games, three straight home games, and then a road game to cap it all off. They beat Mississippi State last year 31-28. Going to be another difficult game there just because of the air raid offense. And, of course, all those cowbells as well. Arkansas typically fares well against the Bulldogs, but, again, not going to be an easy task. Although Sam Pittman, 2-0 against the Bulldogs since he arrived in Fayetteville. They then travel to BYU. To me, that is, for me, one of the toughest games on Arkansas' schedule just because you are taking a break from conference play. At that point, you would have already played four SEC games, and you have to go all the way out west Uh, to play a non-conference game in Utah. Uh, That's just a tough way to handle things. Uh, You know, you're not staying in the South. You've got to go out West. It's a game that absolutely does matter, but it doesn't matter on your conference schedule. Uh, It's a tough break for Arkansas there. And then you get the bye week right after that. So the Razorbacks might be looking ahead to get a week of rest after a very, very brutal first part of their schedule. So that BYU game is a major trap game and very, very difficult for Arkansas going into 2022. They get the bye week before going to play Auburn, a team that Arkansas has not fared well against in recent years. Battle of the Tigers in Fayetteville 38-23 last year. And then they get into the month of November. Those three straight home games are going to be huge. Uh, Liberty, going to be a great opportunity for Arkansas to get a non-conference win against a quality opponent led by Hugh Freeze. Razorbacks, I think, are lucky they do not have to face Malik Willis in the Flames. Then they get LSU and Ole Miss. They beat the Tigers 16-13 in overtime last year in Baton Rouge in Death Valley. And then fell to Ole Miss in Oxford 52-51 in what was one of the better games of the entire college football season. Razorbacks scoring as time expired, choosing to go for two to get the win, and falling just short. Pass falling incomplete, falling by one. So, again, those five, that five-game stretch is going to be key at the beginning of the year, but how they fare in the month of November will be uh, huge, too. It's, you know, you got to finish strong. If you're Arkansas, they certainly did last year. They kind of had a middle of the season, uh, mid-season crisis there where they had a couple uh, drops, fell to Auburn, uh, fell to Ole Miss, uh, were not playing well at all. 
and then finish their season strong, uh, beating teams like Missouri and Mississippi State uh, and LSU. They can do that again with Liberty, LSU, and Ole Miss all coming to Fayetteville. Arkansas will probably be favored, I would say, in the majority of those games. They close out the year against Missouri, who they beat 34-17 to in Fayetteville last year. And that battle line rivalry, we've seen some classics in recent years. But right now, most signs would point to Arkansas being favored over the Tigers, coming off a relatively disappointing year under Eli Drinkwitz. So again, guys, we talked a lot about the Hogs here. We kind of broke down their schedule a little bit. I know five games is almost half their season, but again, the Razorbacks have the talent to make some serious noise, not just in the SEC, but on the national stage. Remember last year, guys, they rose as high as number eight in the entire country before getting murdered by Georgia. But the Razorbacks were eighth in the country at one point. Do not be surprised to see Arkansas crack the top ten again in 2022. And if they fare well in those first five games, 4-1 and one or 5-0 and oh after Alabama, you need to watch out because they're going to be calling the Hogs. You're going to be able to hear them from every corner of the state. And it's going to stretch all across the country because if they can get past Alabama, the Razorbacks will be taken seriously as a national title contender. Sam Pittman doing phenomenal things in Fayetteville. Expect another fantastic year from Arkansas. And we'll have their official prediction for them coming in just a few months. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. If you like this type of content, you need to stick around here at the Gridiron Expert, guys. We've got college football content coming for a year round. Schedule previews is just the tip of the iceberg. We've got predictions coming in June for every single college football team. So do not miss out on that. Become a part of our Gridiron Expert Nation so you can get nonstop college football content and you can help our channel grow. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.